novelist Lisa Jewell is famous for writing page-turning thrillers with intricate plots that mesmerize readers. The prolific author has released her newest book, The Family Remains. Jewel plunges readers into a dark world of long-buried family secrets and spine-chilling murders. The Family Remains is a standalone sequel to Jewel's previous book, The Family Upstairs. Jewel says she never intended to write a sequel, but her readers demanded it. And then my inbox started filling up with um, messages and comments from readers saying, there will be a sequel, won't there? Tell me there's a sequel coming. Is a part two coming? You are going to write another one, aren't you? Well, and then at some point, I just thought, you know what? Why not? It could actually be really good fun. And for readers, it's a wild ride. You can buy The Family Remains at The Novel Neighbor. Thank you so much for being here today. I am so excited to talk about really all of your books with you. But if someone has not heard about The Family Remains before, for some reason, what? let's start with what The Family Remains is about. Okay, well, I think maybe let's start with what it is, because it is a standalone sequel to a previous book of mine, which was called The Family Upstairs, which came out three years ago. <laughs> um, but I did write it to be read on, on its own. So you don't have to have read The Family Upstairs before you go into The Family Remains. But if you want to do both back to back, that would be amazing. So The Family Remains begins with the discovery of a bag of bones on the shores of the River Thames. Um, and detectives are called to the scene and the detective investigation leads um, DC Samuel Owusu to this abandoned mansion in Cheney Walk in Chelsea where he slowly uncovers a terrible story of something that happened in that house 30 years previously, which ties into <laughs> the characters from the first book, but also introduces some new characters into the second book. And, um, and thus it commences. It does. And yeah. it's a wild ride. It is so <laughs> wild, yes. Yeah, it's quite exhausting. <laughs> it, in such a good, in a good way, way, though. Yes, yeah. in such a good way. And I do think it's so interesting uh, to be very honest, I had not read The Family Upstairs yet. I had read other stuff by you, and it was just one of those of, like, COVID and everything else. And so I was the tester for reading The Family Remains of can this be yes. sold as a standalone sequel? And it can. Oh. <laughs> it's <All> fantastic. Right. <laughs> uh, I do recommend going back. It's, it's fun no matter how you do it. I yes. then went back and immediately read The Family Upstairs, like, put Remains down picked up upstairs and went off on a wild ride. So how does it work that way around? I don't think I've spoken to anyone who's done it back to front. Is that still fun? Oh, it's delightful. Okay, good. <laughs> and you leave it just going, you are such a mastermind. I mean, you have so cleverly woven these two together. It is so, it's so well plotted, so well thought out, which we would expect nothing less. Mm. This is why you are who you are and the reputation that you have gotten. But did you always know that you were going to go back and revisit this no. family? Okay. And which it which is ironic because um the the reason why I did revisit the family is because of um pester power really from my readers. So the so the family upstairs came out as I say 3 years ago and there is a line the very last line of the family upstairs is suggestive of the story existing beyond the last page of the book but that wasn't why I put that line in there. Um, the line was really just to mess with the reader's head a little bit and leave them leave them thinking, oh my goodness, what's going to happen next, rather than I'm going to write a whole a whole another <laughs> book. Um, and I left it there. I thought that's it. Um, there's an un there's an unanswered question at the end of that book, but it's tantalising and it's and it's sort of exciting. But off we go into the uh, you know into the, the the future, the bright future of new books and new people. And then my inbox started filling up with. Um, messages and comments from readers saying there will be a sequel won't there tell me there's a sequel coming is a part two coming you are going to write another one aren't you and at first I was replying saying no 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 that's it I'm sorry it's finished I'm not writing a sequel and then at some point I just thought you know what 
why not? It could actually be really good fun. And there was a bit of me that really wanted to know the last line of The Family Upstairs is a character called Henry deciding he's going to go and chase his um, his obsession, this um, guy called Finn, um, to Botswana. And there was a bit of me that really wanted to know what would happen when Henry found Finn, so I went for it. Incredible. <laughs> Mainly down to my readers. <laughs> Look at us go. Yeah. Fantastic job, everybody. Yes. <laughs> team effort. <laughs> so when did you start... So because of us pestering you, yeah. there was delay in that of like, when did you actually start The Family Remains? Yeah, so there were two books in between. Okay. So there was Invisible Girl that came out the year after Family Upstairs, and then there was The Night She Disappeared, which came out after Invisible Girl. So I started writing The Family Remains three years after I started writing The Family Upstairs. I started writing it uh, January 2021. So there was there was a delay, um, but... Yeah, I think it's I think it's still quite a nice fresh amount of time between the books. Yeah, it's like the amount of time that we got. I was yeah. wondering how that timeline lined up of like whether it was three years for us and whether that was in fact yes. three years I for write you. A, yeah, so I, I, I'm contracted to write a book a year. So my years are like clockwork. <laughs> Every year is exactly the same as the year before. It's just a different book and a different group of people that I'm writing about. But in terms of what happens and when, uh, it's the same every year. I love that. Yeah. Uh, I hopefully you love that. <laughs> I do. Oh, no, I like knowing what's happening. <laughs> it's like good news for us that we know yeah. <laughs> that we can get that every year. It's safe to say that The Family Reigns is receiving so much love. I mean, I don't know if you've ever gone on and looked at your reviews. Oh, yes. But <laughs> people absolutely love it. It's gotten the warmest reception. Yeah. So now I feel like it's safe to kind of go back. Were you nervous at all like walk us through like what was going on before you knew how your audience was going to receive this book I was really really nervous before I started right I think I was more nervous before I started writing it because I was going off piste because I was going out of my comfort zone and my comfort zone is to write a whole fresh new novel every year um, and I've, I have written a sequel before, but it was many, many years ago. And it was very different because it was the second part of a love story, which didn't feel like there was quite so much sort of pressure to recreate anything. Um, and I was terrified that I was going to make a mess of it because it's a different skill set. You're having to think in a very different way the whole way through the writing of the book because you're constantly aware of the fact that someone could be reading the book who hasn't read the first book, like yourself, or... Equally, you're aware of the fact that someone could be reading the book having read and adored the family upstairs <laughs> and having massively high expectations. Um, so I was really, really nervous going into it. Um, but once I found my rhythm with it and once I found my people as well for it, so Henry was a given. I, I had to be <laughs> Henry. Um, and then I think Lucy was kind of a given as well. So Lucy is Henry's sister. Um, and then the thing that got me really excited about writing the novel was the addition of a character who's mentioned very briefly in the first novel called Rachel, who is the second wife of Michael, who mm -hmm. it's, I don't know if we're going into spoiler territory here, but let's assume you've read The Family Upstairs. <laughs> um, the, uh, Michael is murdered in the yes. first novel by Lucy. Um, and it always sort of intrigued me, this idea that she only gets mentioned in one line in the first book, yet, if she, you know, she's a real person, obviously. Um, <laughs> she's not just a figment of my imagination. And she was in London at the time, and I've always wondered how she would have reacted to getting the news about Michael's death. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and whether her relationship with Michael had been as toxic and dysfunctional mm -hmm. as Lucy's relationship with Michael. So she was a, a, a completely fresh new storyline and really going down deep into the into the way um, her relationship with Michael panned out. Um, and then I also have a detective, um, which I wasn't expecting. He turned up quite okay. unexpectedly out of the blue. Um, and yeah, so once it was all in place, I had my four people and two fresh perspectives. I, can't, I got quite excited about it, yeah, and I lost that nervousness, that, that worry that I was making a mistake and that it was all going to be a disaster. Um, and I, re I think I enjoyed writing it as much as people appear to have enjoyed reading it. Rachel is one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. So I was like yeah. hoping that you were going to say yeah. that was who you were like excited to introduce us yes. to. And I think that's the moment, it happens very early on, mm -hmm. I will not spoil it for anybody even though it's like the first chapter, but her reaction to Michael's death yeah. was like, I knew immediately that I was in.
I was yeah. like, fantastic. Yeah. I'm, we're going on this ride. <laughs> yeah. I'm super excited about it. This is going to be good for me. And then it was. So Well, the fun thing about that was when I first, when I wrote Rachel's first chapter originally, she had a completely different reaction. Because at that point, because I don't plan my novels... Okay. And I hadn't started her journey with Michael yet. I didn't actually know what sort of marriage she was going to end up having with Michael. Okay. So once I've got to the end of the journey with, with Rachel and Michael, I had to come back and rewrite that first chapter to give her the reaction that okay. she has in that first chapter, which is quite um, an unusual reaction. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. It's perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, okay, so you said you didn't know, like, so how did you, how do you go about your writing process? Like, do you plot everything out? Do you outline everything? Or do you just kind of... Sounds like maybe you just go with it. Yeah, I, I I just really just jump in. Okay. Just jump in head first and just not worry about anything. Okay. Um, it's taken me many, many years to grow the confidence to do that and not think that I should be more organized before I set off. Um, but I do just set off with the bare bones, bare minimum of what you could possibly hope to have when you start writing a, a 100,000 word novel. Um, so for this, I had, well, originally... Henry had been going to go to Botswana to find Finn. Okay. Which I I don't do any research, but I thought if I'm going to do this, then I really need to have some understanding of what Finn does for a living. He's a he's a he's a, a ranger um, at a game reserve, and I thought I can't just throw Henry into Botswana into this situation that I know nothing about. So I thought I'm going to have to go to Botswana and go on a safari holiday. Um, and which would have been tax deductible. For research, yes. Yeah. Um, but then lockdown hit, and I thought, what a missed opportunity. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, so yes, I had to find somewhere else for Henry to follow Finn to. I wondered how we got to Chicago. So that makes that sense. was again. That was just yeah. So it was a, a very much a, okay. So if Henry's not going to Botswana, where is he going? And once I've started writing, I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop and go off and think about something. I want to just keep going. So I'll quite often just find solutions. Just that'll do. And I, I just that. saw Chicago. That will do. And I had this idea about Finn's sexuality. I wasn't sure what because we don't really get that deep into Finn's head in the Mm -mm. first book we don't really know who he is no Uh, he's quite an enigma in the first book but I had this idea about his sexuality and I knew there was a very very um active um gay community in Chicago so I thought let's just put him in just in case he is gay let's have him in Chicago and I'll work out if he is gay later on once I've (laughs) once I've written written him um in a bit more depth so I think that was what was going on in my head is just like if you're a gay guy you know, who didn't want to, you know, wanted to be a long way from home. Yeah. Maybe you'd live in Chicago. Where so, could you find community? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that that was why, <laughs> that's why Chicago came. Um, so no, all of it just sort of lands in my lap just at the last minute, really. Um, so that, I knew that. I knew that Henry was going to go after Finn to Chicago. I knew that Rachel and Michael were going to meet, but didn't know what was going to happen. Okay. Uh, I knew that Lucy was going to be anxious about Henry chasing Finn across the world but I didn't really know how she was going to respond to that anxiety and then there was this entirely unexpected detective um, (laughs) who was only supposed to be in the prologue Um, I I usually tend to leave my detective work to my characters because I don't understand police procedure sure and I don't want to understand it because it's just sounds like a hell of a lot of work (laughs) I'd have to read books and and talk to talk to detectives and what have you about the the reality of it Um, but for some reason, this guy, I was just drawn into his work. He finds, you know, he comes and he finds these bones and I was drawn into his work. I thought, I want to be there when you find out the identity of the person whose mm-hmm. bones they are. And I want to follow you as you try and un- unthread this weird story that you've just found yourself inside. So, yes. So it was most of it was unexpected. Most of it was very unexpected. Well, and I think it works so well because... In family upstairs, we kind of get that glimpse through a reporter. Like that's kind of yes. how your outside person is like, I guess, delving through like what this family has gone through. And so then to have it discovered this time through a detective yeah. was a really nice compliment. Yes, and it is. A, I suppose it is a sort of retelling of what the reader of the family upstairs already knew. Um, but I think it the book needed that sense of that sense of impending peril for the main characters you needed to feel that they were under threat somehow and that their secrets were going to become you know revealed and uncovered um so 
I think it worked as a good way for the brand new reader to be acquainted with what had happened in the house in the first book, but also for the reader who already knew what had happened in the house to feel really nervous and anxious about whether the lamb children were going to get caught out. We can never not be anxious about the lamb. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Anxiety the whole way through both of these books. Like I was very, I I, like Lucy was very anxious about Henry and Finn. Did you always know what Henry's story was going to be the second time around too? Because no. Henry is so lovable. Yes. Henry is lovable, but he's terrifying. Yes. And he is the sort of guy that if you met him in real life, you'd keep him at arm's length. He'd be like, I am not sure about you. You're very strange. Um, and I'm not sure I want to let you into my life. Um, but he is, he's so many shades of grey. And he is lovable and he's hilarious also. He's so funny. Um, but so when you read the book, you may or may not have noticed that Henry disappears about two thirds of the way into the book, mm-hmm. and then we don't hear from him again for quite some time. Um, oh, and I noticed. Was, <laughs> yeah, and that was. I thought that was good to build up the tension, but it was also yes. good for me because I hadn't worked out. I hadn't worked out what his true intentions okay. were, and I wasn't in. I, I I needed time to process what was going on with the other characters before I could before I could um, delve into that moment. I'm going slightly into spoiler territory, so I'm I know. rewind it. <laughs> I like bit. watching you make it. Yes. <laughs> um, so that gap, I needed that gap as a writer because I just didn't know. I didn't okay. know what Henry was going to do and I needed to come back to it at a point where I was ready to write about it. <laughs> I'm just reliving what it was like when he had disappeared. And I. Yeah. (laughs) And anything could have happened. And that was the same for me in my head. I was like, anything could have happened at this point. Absolutely anything from the darkest, bleakest, most awful thing to the blandest, least, least eventful thing that you could imagine and everything in between. So. And I think one of the things that I love about your writing the most is that you have these cast of characters and you clearly care about them and love. I won't say all of them, but we you love a lot of your characters. Uh, and especially like Lucy and Rachel, it's so obvious to the reader, I think. But your characters go through really terrible th- things. Yes. What is that like to love a character so much and then also write them into sometimes such misery? Yeah, well, I, but the thing is when I set off on these journeys, I know, in the, you know within the genre that I write, that bad things are going to happen to the characters who I love. Um, And I know that at certain points I'm going to have to write terrible things happening to them and put them through agonising experiences. Um, But what I have found, it might sound quite heartless, (laughs) but from my point of view as a writer, the worst thing for me, much worse than, than inflicting awful things on my lovely characters, is not to have written Okay. The thing that I needed to write in order to bring the story onto the next stage. So I feel much, much happier having written these sort of brutal, awful, cruel scenes than I would if I had failed to write them. Does that make any sense? It totally makes sense. <laughs> uh, so as much as it's, you know, as as a reader, when you're reading what's happened to a character that you've just, you know, got to know over however many pages, and that's quite upsetting for me it's just business as usual which sounds awful but it's kind of what I do for a living and it's what I have to do it is and the act of having done it is satisfying and and good for me it's a positive thing for me so sorry I love that answer so much (laughs) (laughs) sorry I just have to write them that way yeah sorry (laughs) it has to happen and it's my job and I'm just doing my job leave me be (laughs) Well, and so as a bookseller, one of my favorite things to kind of spring upon people is like if someone hasn't been a reader for a while or they haven't gotten deep into your backlist, they might not know that at one point you did give us some romance. Yes. And so for many years. Yeah. And it's also incredible. Just shout out to your romance novels. But what led to the change in genres? And well, how do we get on thrillers? Well, I think it, the, the question actually should be more framed, how did you get into the romantic comedies? <laughs> um, because that's not and that's not for a minute. If you had asked me in those sort of years when I was thinking, oh, I'd like to write a novel one day, one day I'd like to write a novel, what sort of novel I would write, I would have assumed I'd write something really dark um, because that's the sort of thing that I've liked, I've always liked. 
Okay. Um, yet when I did have the opportunity to sit down and start writing a novel back in 1996, when I was 28-ish, I guess, 27, um, that's just not where my head was at. I was in a particular okay. place in my life where everything was very golden and I was newly in love and my life had just taken off in many ways. And I think I wrote the book that reflected how I was feeling at that time rather than what the book that reflected my interests, my obsession with, with the dark side of humanity. So I think it was always just a matter of time, but it was just peeling back the layers with each book. Um, so I, I had a reputation in the UK where I was very successful from the beginning of my career as being a chiclet writer, the dreaded chiclet phrase. Um, and so it took quite a lot of courage. Yeah. And I certainly couldn't have made that jump in one book. That would have been, you know, the klaxon would have gone off and uh, it would have all been... <laughs> It would have been a big deal. Yeah. So I just did it really, really slowly and gently. And with each book, I left the romantic aspect of the story sort of more and more in the shadows until I got rid of it entirely. I, I think I was in The Truth About Melody Brown was the first book where I ditched the romantic element of the book completely. And then I just started like looking at the darkness in the hearts of families. So I did lots of family sagas with sort of secrets and mysteries. Um, and then I wrote a novel called The Third Wife, um, which was supposed to just be about this guy who's been married many, many times, has this very <laughs> messy family set up. He's got small children, he's got adult children, he's got many ex-wives, and he's now he's got a new wife. And that's what it was supposed to be about. And I got halfway through it and just felt really bored. I thought, I'm really bored with this, really bored of um, studying this man's situation and the mess he's made of his life. And so I went and, and wrote a prologue where his third wife gets thrown under the wheels of a bus on Charing Cross Road in the middle of the night and turned it into more of a thriller. Okay. Um, and I think that was the point at which I, I moved, officially moved genre. Yeah. Um, into the genre in which I write now. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you've been reading me from book one through to here, you may not even have noticed the changes as they went because they were very subtle. It's so, yes. I recommend everybody go back and check out your... Oh, I wouldn't recommend back. everyone. Not I think everyone? some people might find them un, unenjoyable. Some <sighs> people might not like those romantic comedies at all. They, 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 they're, they're written, it's my voice. It's definitely yes. Lisa Jewell. You know it's a Lisa Jewell novel, <laughs> but the tone is different. There's a lot of exclamation marks. There's a lot of swear words that don't need to be in there. Um, and also... Because they are 20 years old, these books, there's also some stuff in there that's quite problematic now. And I'd love to be able to go back to, I, I was able to do it to one of my um, okay. older books. I was able to go through and take out some more problematic descriptions and things in there that had felt fine 20, 15 years ago and didn't feel fine now. Um, so there's many reasons why I would not say everybody should run to the local bookshop and buy my <laughs> romantic comedies. Um, but if you like romantic comedies, mine are quite good. I would say some that. of your so, yeah. well, yes. you can make it some of your backlist. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and including like if people only know you from family upstairs and family remains and like stuff that happened in between your older mystery thrillers are also yes oh yeah go go so oh fun. yeah do the whole thriller backlist there's not one there that I wouldn't recommend I, don't I think, think, I think anybody they're all knows good who messy families like and, you. <laughs> and then yeah go go into the messy families as well the messy families are also good but yeah, go into the chiclet and romantic comedies with caution, I would say. Yes, yes, <laughs> we'll, we'll allow that. Um, to return to The Family Remains, so we got a sequel that we didn't think that we would necessarily get. Yes. Um, so it's now the second time that you've had to say goodbye to these characters. Yes. I mean, we spend, like, a finite period of time with them, but significantly less compared to what it is to write them, I imagine, and think about them every day. Like, how do you say goodbye to them how do you send them off were you ready to see them go again or do I, you miss them yeah I, I I always am very very happy when I get to the end of the book to say sayonara everyone and 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 leave the room and goodbye um and I very rarely think again in that way in that sort of oh I wonder what they're doing now or I wonder how much fun it would be to bring this character back in fact never but weirdly with this book I do feel for two characters in the book that I would like to revisit them. Somehow, I think I would love to reuse DC Samuel Uwusu, um, if 
if you know he he he's a metropolitan police detective, so it'd have to be a London set book um, in order for him to come back. Um, but oh, I'd love I don't know I'd love to do Henry somehow somewhere. <laughs> As a just sort of what Henry did next adventure story or something. I don't know. I don't want to revisit the Lamb family. I don't okay. want to revisit Cheney Walk. I don't want to revisit any of that whole backstory of what happened in the first book. Um, but Henry, how can I not write about Henry again? I mean, <laughs> I would take like just a cameo, you know, yeah, just like a I'm little, thinking. like if he was just there on yeah. page somewhere, I could be like, hello, sir. Yes. Good to see you. Or maybe. Maybe what what will sate that for me is if they finally make the TV adaptation of... So they are under option, both books are under option, with a very high probability of getting made at the moment. Um, so maybe once, it once, be a dream. once it's all <laughs> once it's been on the screen and I've been able to sit on my sofa and watch it all happen, I'll be able to say goodbye to Henry. But at the moment, I don't feel quite ready, I don't think. In your acknowledgements, you always think your editors and how much they are a part of your overall process. Is there anything that was like edited out that you still think about or any like interesting things to talk about from like the editing process? That's such a good question. And I'm, see this is the thing, I, I love editing. I love being edited. So I like doing my own edits and I also like being told what to do. I love yeah. the whole process of tweaking and cutting and moving and changing to make it a better book. Um, but once, once, the thing, once the thing has been done, the change has been made, I don't think of it again. It's gone. It's done. The book is now better because I've done it. So it's sort of like, it's like a lump of, it's like I've taken a lump of clay off a, off a sculpture and just thrown it on the floor. And now it's just a lump of clay. For me now, that, that is it. That's the book. There was no other book. You are typically, authors are typically on tour for something while they have been working yes. on something else. Can yes. you tell us anything about I, that? Yes, I can. Okay. So this is having, you know, said that I am a book a year author, which I am. Um, this year I'm a two book a year <gasps> author. Um, I've been asked to write a book out of genre, which will be published in 2024. But obviously I couldn't say to my publishers, oh, can you just hold on for a year because I've got to write this other book. Uh, which means that usually at this point when I'm promoting the book that's just come out halfway through the year, I'm halfway through my current book. But because of writing two books this year, I've actually finished it already. Um, it hasn't got a title at the moment, but okay. it is basically in a nutshell. It's about a podcaster in London who um, starts making a podcast about a local woman in her area and in the process of making that podcast becomes inadvertently caught up in her own true crime podcast um so do we get to know like what genre no because it's, it's top okay. secret <gasps> well i you will hear about it and you will know about it because it's going to be quite a big deal when it comes but yes i feel like you have just given me shocking news it that i need shocking. to just like be able to sit with yeah. i am thrilled <laughs> yes well i'm thrilled as well but it uh, yeah it's it has made it quite an intense year for me so far i haven't had a lot of sort of down downtime did that present any new challenges having just having to, do... to yeah well just in terms of i write a thousand words a day that's how i process that's okay. how i that's my process is to write a thousand words a day and i've just been writing two thousand words a day which is a very different thing because i'm so used to that rhythm that yeah. sort of clunk 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 day by day by day thousand words thousand words and having to crank it up to two thousand and i do i'm i i i, I worried that that might have that might show in the writing or that might have some impact on how it reads to the reader because it's I've done it differently but maybe the cracks won't show maybe you nobody know, will notice and it'll just seem like a completely normal book but yes it has been challenging I so. can guarantee we're not gonna notice hope so. I hope so <laughs> I have complete faith <laughs> thank you I hope, hope you're right I think that being able to execute the family remains after the expectations that many people went in to that standalone sequel with shows just how brilliant you are oh. at what you do. Thank you so much. This has been incredible to talk to you about and incredible to hear how The Family Remains came about. Thank you so much for giving us this book. Thank oh. you for being willing to listen to your readers and oh, come well, back and yeah. visit this family. <laughs> Not sure it'll happen again, but I'm glad it happened on this occasion. Very glad. <laughs>